Farm. This video is about how we do soil testing here on the University of Washington Seattle campus. Today you'll learn how we test in the field, then um, the results of those tests. You'll visit both the Mercer Court Farm site and the Center for Urban Horticulture Farm site. King Conservation District provides basic soil tests for all residents and municipalities in King County. And it covers commercial farms, pastures, parks, your home yard, community gardens, or anybody really that, that wants to plant in King County is eligible for a total of five free basic soil nutrient tests. Uh, you can also get a more in-depth soil test. And when you get your results, you'll get recommendations on the correct amount of fertilizer for your plants. And this is important to avoid excess or too much fertilizer because you really don't want to over fertilize. Uh, it'll go into groundwater, ends up in um, the water system. And also um, it'll help you adjust the acidity of your soil, which is good for the particular crops you're doing. And it'll help your plants grow better. Yeah. We're going to go outside and you're going to see how we go and take soil samples in our soil here at the UW farm. So I'm going to test right in the bed and I'm going to open up a hole and then what I want to do is get a slice of the soil, a really nice um, profile so you'll notice the different colors, this is a lighter uh, piece of soil, and then this is the top. I flipped it. So I'm going to take this and move it out of the way. You want to get deep enough that you can... I like to go a foot down to really get the whole profile. And you see the different profiles of soil. I have dark spots and light spots um, in my bucket. Maybe another one, then we'll go down and we'll take two, and then we'll take two more, mix it all up in the bucket, and then we pull from that uh, collective bit. I just like, oh, hey now, this is a really good photo. So there's worms in here, which is really great. So this is really good testimony to like having really healthy soil. Um, we're gonna go in and get a nice good slice. I'll pull out any um, grass because I, I don't want that in my in my soil sample. This is um you find this in a hardware store. It's for cement mixing, but you could use a plastic tarp or mix it up in the five gallon bucket. Now everybody asks like how many how much you know percent should I take? Well it depends on how big your farm is or how small your garden. And the KCD website has a lot of recommendations on that. Our goal is to do it the same method every year so we can track differences and to use the same testing service every year. So you're not getting um, yeah, different reports with different methodology. Each soil sample has at least two cups of material. I use a basic household like sandwich bag or any kind of clean plastic bag. You can also use a paper bag. You also don't want your soil to be really wet and saturated. You want it to be maybe 50% moisture or less. We put the, the name of the beds on it and then you want to write um, also the date. It's really, really important that you take your soil samples on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and get it to the office by Thursday. You do not want your soil test to sit over the weekend in the laboratory. It can change your organic matter. Always make copies of your test sheets. For those of you using the King County report, your test sheet will look like this that you print out and you put in your, your bags. I always make copies. This one was an individual that's volunteering with us and they listed the sample numbers that they wanted. Um, they wrote what they were growing, um, more details on what was being grown, and this was pre-planting. And when you sample, the depth of the sample, they really just want you to uh, sample like the top six inches of soil at least. Now we're nearing 
the conclusion of the video, uh, we got our soul reports back. So now let's explore what happens when you get your results back through an email. We use a &L Western Labs, which is close to us um, and affordable. a &L Western sent us this, which is understanding your soil analysis report. They also sent us a soil analysis, and this really goes over um, how to calculate uh, the ranges of different uh, amendments that you might be working with. And then the last piece of the soil report are these amazingly colorful, but also very informative soil reports. Let me go through a couple of those with you, and we're going to compare last year's to this year's. So this is the same plot in 2021 to 2019 is the last time we did the soils report. During COVID, this service was shut down. Notice the levels of organic matter remained basically the same. Nitrogen significantly different. Our nitrogen levels dropped between the years 2019 and 2021. That might be because of the time of year. We use a lot of cover crop and the cover crop the available nitrogen is not there because our cover crop is still breaking down. That's just a hypothesis. Phosphorus levels, well, we're maintaining 132 weak bray, you'll learn about that, to 110. So we dropped a little bit. Potassium, we went in 2019 from 411 pounds per parts per million to 83 so we dropped dramatically in potassium magnesium we also dropped calcium however went way up notice 1726 parts per million here's where we were wow 2032 so the other thing you're going to want to look at sodium and sulfur and these are basic of the many elements that you need these are we asked that the soil test address vegetables so they're going to give us recommendations based on the fact that we want to grow vegetables. The other thing you really want to look at is your pH of the soil. So this plant, was, which is actually at Mercer Court, it has a 6.5 pH this year. It also had one in 2019, so we're maintaining our pH. The other things to consider are for soils... Um, people who want to go deeper into their learning is the um, cation saturation. This year we're at 11.1, previously we're at 14.4. The numbers here comparing the calcium stayed relatively the same, magnesium relatively the same, dramatic difference in potassium, and sodium also dramatic difference. At the bottom, they're going to talk about liming and some recommendations on nitrogen. The key, I think, is split any nitrogen evenly over the active growing season to avoid over-fertilizing at any one time. So let's talk about the, the soil test report a little more closely. Organic matter, when they refer to organic matter, organic matter is material that was once living. Organic in this sense really actually means contains carbon. And plants are really great accumulators of carbon. The many benefits of organic matter include improving soil tilth or texture. Uh, organic matter also improves drainage um, in really, really tight soils like say clay. It really improves water retention. So think of a really strong rainstorm, the more absorbent, the more organic matter, especially in sandy soils, uh, the more absorbent it's going to be. Also, organic matter creates air pockets, so you have better air penetration into the soil for the microbes that live there. Uh, it also keeps the soil loose because roots um, penetrate the soil. The next thing we want to talk about is actually nitrogen. And nitrogen is one of the most important um, soil amendments for me as a farmer or a gardener growing crops. It's really important for the leaf or the uh, initial structure and growth of my plants. If I have too little nitrogen, the leaves might be yellow. 
if I have too much nitrogen, the leaves might be yellow. Uh, the nitrogen also is sort of, leads to sort of how green your plants can be or the, the greening up. So trace elements is the last piece that we're gonna address and it's in your soils report. Trace elements would be like zinc, iron, um, manganese, boron, copper, and I don't need to talk too much about it, but you'll get this information in your soils report. A lot, if you're using organic amendments like kelp meal, has a lot of trace elements or micronutrients. So this is getting into higher level, and I really recommend taking a soils class, or in the urban farm class, you probably discuss this. Uh, and there's plenty of books on the subject. But Steve Solomon's book is really good. Elliot Coleman is another book that I, I rely on. And then Tilth has a great book, which is a booklet. And month by month teaches you a lot about just sort of basic level stuff on soils and soil analysis and trace elements and naturally occurring sources for these kinds of things. But also, uh, this time of year, just so happens that when we're filming this video, it's April, so it's Earth Month. So, happy Earth Day to everybody. Uh, Earth Day should be every day, right? And um, I hope that people in soils classes and beyond the general public might enjoy this video. It's just a brief introduction. Um, but the first step in, in starting your own garden is really get a handle on your soil test. So wait for the next slide or two and you'll see a, a bunch of resources for you to, to take action and maybe learn about growing um, 